Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game SO. Today we're going to continue the series Emulation Night School, where I show you how to set up some of the most popular emulators for your PC, how to get games running, how to get your controller set up, and how to make sure you're going to be having a fun time. And don't worry about the 3D M2 in the shot, you either already know why that's there, or you will soon in a different video. Today we're talking about the Dolphin emulator, specifically for GameCube. I'm breaking this up into two episodes, one for GameCube and one for Wii, so this is going to be your GameCube example right here. And before we get too far involved, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, and subscribe, and ring that notification bell definitely helps us out and if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel you got a patreon link down below as well and as usual if you need specific help getting emulators set up there's a ten dollar tier on my patreon for emulation night school where you get direct access to me via chat i can help you out there if you need it but if you pay attention you probably won't need it whatsoever now i will say dolphin emulator is one of the holy trinity of great emulation devices we have dolphin we have pcsx2 and we have duck station as three of the things emulation wise that i think can 100 100% replace original hardware. It really is that good. So the first thing you're going to want to do is click the download button. There's going to be two branches here, releases and development versions. I always grab the development version. I've never had any issue with it whatsoever. So go ahead and scroll down because that's what I recommend. And you're going to see there's two versions, Windows X64 and ARM64. Trust me, if you have an ARM CPU in your system, you 100% know you do. So just grab the X64 version. That is what you're going to need. And you're going to see that little bit of pink box right there. You also need the 64-bit version of Windows C++ redistributable for the Visual Studio. And we're going to grab that as well. And if you're not sure whether or not that's installed in your system, I'm going to show you a really easy way to find out because that link's going to open up a page to Microsoft. And if we scroll down, you're going to see the latest version right here. Grab the one in the middle, the x86 version. That's what you're going to want. So just click that and it'll download to your downloads folder. You're not going to want ARM64. You're not going to want x64. You want to just grab the one in the middle. So just make sure you're paying attention when you're downloading the links so you have the most proper software here. And I'll check to make sure I grab the right one in my download folder. It is the one at the recording of this video in the middle. So when you have that downloaded, you'll see I've done it once before, probably a long time ago. If you double click on it and it's not installed, it'll give you the option to install it. If you have it installed, it'll say repair or uninstall. If you see repair or uninstall, you can just close the application. If you see install, hit install, and obviously you know what's going to happen from there. You're going to have that package popped onto your computer and just go ahead and unzip Dolphin wherever you want. It doesn't install, it just unpacks, so wherever you want it to live is where you want to unzip it. And you can move it, it doesn't really break anything. Once you open the folder, you're going to see the executable. We're going to launch into that. And then from there, we're going to have all of the top menu items. I'm going to go through each menu with you, show you what settings to leave as is, show you which ones you can and may want to change, show you how to add games, launch them, change the graphics, everything like that. So the first thing, if we go into general settings, you're going to see general interface, audio paths, GameCube, Wii, and advanced. These are going to be all of the different options. And for the most part, everything here is going to be exactly as you want to leave it. I really don't recommend touching anything in any of these options whatsoever. Maybe you want to turn down the volume. But the one thing you want to do is add a path to where you're going to store your games. For me, I put a folder called Games in with where Dolphin lives. You can either nest it inside of it or I basically just do it in the unzipped folder. This is where we're going to be adding all of the different ISO files for both GameCube and Wii. But again, remember this is just GameCube specific right here. Once you add that folder, it'll show up in the list and you're good to go on that. As far as GameCube is concerned, you can change the system language if your language isn't English, but I'm assuming because you're watching this tutorial, your language definitely is. You can also enable PAL 60 mode for games that run in PAL territories that have a 60 frame per second mode. Honestly, there's not very many of them whatsoever. And you can also change your different aspect ratios, both for GameCube and Wii. But in general, I just leave Wii as 16 by 9 and will change the aspect ratio for GameCube in a different menu. But if you go through all of this right here, again, what I just recommend is you leave everything as stock. You can overclock the CPU, but for the most part, that can get a couple games to run at a higher frame rate, but it breaks more things than it improves. So unless you get really deep into this, just leave it at 100%. And honestly, if you're into overclocking on emulation, you're probably not watching this tutorial either. So just leave all these options alone. Don't fiddle around in these menus unless you really intend on doing so. So if you come over to options here, you're going to see graphic settings, and that's going to be one of the most important tabs. By default, the backend is OpenGL, and you can use whatever you want, including 
including Vulcan, although that does seem to throw up a few more errors. So I kind of recommend just leaving it as OpenGL and going from there, but I'm showing you how to change that in case you really want to play around. In the graphic settings in this first menu, you can force aspect ratios, you can do automatic. Some games on the GameCube side do need to be forced into 16 by 9 if you're using a widescreen hack or if the game supports it, but on Wii, it's pretty much auto is going to take care of everything for you, but again, wait for that Wii specific tutorial coming soon. Under enhancements, you're going to see internal rendering resolution. By default, it is 1080p, and depending on the specs of your system, you're going to get all the way up to 8K, but honestly, I have an i9 as well as a 3080 Ti, and I can't touch 8K in most games, it just is pushing too hard. I either hover around 1080p or 4K just depending what I'm doing, and 8x MSAA seems to be the sweet spot here. You can go to 4x, honestly, if you get that internal rendering resolution high enough, MSAA doesn't really even seem noticeable. Texture filtering, output resample, or all default, I leave those on, and you will see the box for widescreen hack right here in case you want to force it to widescreen. You can kind of play around with that as you will, but everything else here, pretty much as is expected. And as far as hacks are concerned, again, not really a menu you're going to pop into under advance, leave everything alone, but you can turn on the frames per second counter if you want to see whether or not you're getting a good frame rate out of the game. And that's kind of just down to your system specs, but honestly, Dolphin really isn't that high test. And as far as audio settings are concerned, just leave them all as is. But we do need to get controllers working. So you'll see here we have a controller setting menu, port 1 through 4. I'm just doing a single player game, so I'm showing you how to set one up. And from there, you can add them as you will. And there is a drop down menu to change different controllers. But for the most part, you're going to be on a standard GameCube style controller. So just leave that as is. We can go ahead and click configure. And this entire window is going to come up. If you have a controller connected, it's usually going to default to it, but this drop down box here will show you all of the connected devices and you can go ahead and select. I'm using an Xbox Series X for this because I kind of like the layout, but I do have a USB adapter for GameCube controllers as well. You can assign buttons here, you can clear them out, you can kind of just change anything to your liking, but by default it should pick up the controller type and auto assign for you because you're going to see under that reset at the top of the screen in the middle, there is a default and a clear. So you can test everything here, make sure it's working, reassign buttons to your liking, add more than one controller, change controllers, do anything you want. You can even see here we can test the rumble motor so you can make sure your vibration is coming through as well. Now I use an Xbox Series X controller so that's what I know auto defaults. Depending on what you're using you may see a different result. So go ahead and just play around in here and again for the Wii component we can emulate a Wii remote or we can have a real Wii remote and that is why that's going to be part two because I'm going to show you how to set up a real Wii remote with Bluetooth tooth and a sensor bar so you can actually have motion controls with that in the nunchuck. The last options menu you want to go to is hotkey settings. This allows you to check out all the different hotkeys for the emulator and set some if you would like. For the most part, this is also where you're going to find out what the hotkeys are. It's going to give you a listing of every single hotkey pre-programmed and then you can add them from there. And honestly, I like to add a volume down and volume up option for myself. And honestly, I did it backwards for this tutorial because I wasn't paying that much attention. But you don't have to do this. You can definitely use your system volume. But I like to use the arrows on my keyboard just to change the volume in case I want to. For the most part, most of these menus aren't going to be very relevant, like the debugging one right there. But honestly, if you go into save and load state, you're going to want to know these if you want to use the save states and the load state features here. You're going to see if you hit shift F1 through F8, it's going to save the state in the game to eight slots, and that allows you to pick up right where you left off. It is not the same thing as a game save. And if we go over to the right hand side, you're going to see F1 through 8 loads it up. So that's basically all you really need to know about setting all of the different options. Options. If you want to know that you're on the most recent version, just click help and check for updates and it'll tell you whether or not there is an update available. But for the most part, once you launch the program, it'll also let you know if there's any updates. So now we're ready to play games. We'll go into this game folder here and this is where you're going to add all of your ISO files. In this instance, the GameCube ones. And you can do nested folders for GameCube and Wii here as well if you would like. I just dropped them all into one big listing. And as long as you set that path that we did earlier to the right directory, the games will auto populate. All you need to do is double click on one and it'll start to run and you'll see you were playing Super Mario Eclipse an awesome fan game that adds 120 shines and a ton of new levels to Super Mario Sunshine and as we first go in I'm running this at 4k on the resolution what I'm going to do in the background in that menu I showed you is I'm going to pop this up to 8k and see whether or not it will work and the minute I hit that toggle you're going to see the frame rate absolutely tanks and this is not playable 
depending on the game, your rendering resolution will be higher or lower. I have a very high spec PC, but I'm not getting 8K out of this any day of the week. So you'll see here, I go back down to 4K and things get smooth again. But as I start to run to some of the enemies, you're going to see a couple of frame dips happen. So I kind of end up at 1440p here. And honestly, between 1440p and 8K, you really wouldn't notice the difference if you're sitting pretty far away from a television. You can decide what you want to do because we're at 4K right here again. And I felt a few dips when I'm attacking these enemies. So 1440p seemed to be the sweet spot. And again, I've got an i9 as well as a 3080 Ti, so I have room to spare. Now in other games you're going to get 4K and 8K, no issues whatsoever, but this is definitely a more graphically demanding game because it runs better in Dolphin than it does on actual hardware. But play around with those settings and see what you want to do. You can go all the way down to the original resolution of a GameCube, make the image much softer, and really give yourself that CRT sort of look. Really, the sky is the limit as far as what you want to do with the rendering resolution. If you want to sacrifice a few frames to get a higher resolution, you can do that. If you want to play at the native look, do that as well. The world is your oyster. You pick and choose. You pick to see what works for you. If you want that fluidity, trust me, 1440p to 4K is going to be your sweet spot because now we're back at 1440p and everything is running exactly as expected. And that is the fun thing about Dolphin. It gives you creative control to do whatever you want. And just be aware I haven't mentioned it yet because you don't need one. No BIOS files required. There's so many different amazing GameCube games that you can play in Dolphin. And you can enhance so many of them to make them look even better than you remember. This is an excellent emulator. And if you followed all of the steps here, you too can play pretty much any GameCube game ever made in a higher resolution and in a prettier look than you ever saw on original GameCube hardware. And again, if you run into any issues, go watch the video a second time. And after that, if you're still not sure, pop over to Patreon. I can offer you some help there as well. But go download Dolphin, start playing it today. Follow this setup guide and you too will be playing GameCube on your PC. Sure to that, we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.